Hobbs and Shaw. You want a war? You've got one. The Fast and the Furious franchise's slow evolution into whatever they goddamn want it to be is complete with Hobbs and Shaw. The ninth installment and the first spin-off of Universal's insanely lucrative franchise bears virtually no resemblance to the 2001 film that started at all, aside from a handful of clever nods and callbacks. But in a lot of ways, it's better for it. Access denied. Access denied. Access denied. When Fast Five breathed fresh life into the series in 2011, it was Dwayne Johnson as Luke Hobbs who became the symbol of that creative resurgence, escalating the racing and smaller crime plots by hiring the main heroes to pull off high-profile heists for the government. Johnson hasn't left the franchise since. Thankfully, Jason Statham's Deckard Shaw, the electric villain of Furious 7, hasn't left either. I'm what you might call a champagne problem. I'm what you call an ice-cold can of whoop-ass. After an opening scene that introduces Idris Elba as the film's cyborg villain, Brixton Lore, as well as Shaw's utterly badass MI6 sister Hattie, we briefly catch up with the titular heroes in their personal lives before they get the same call to action. The script employs the old virus that'll wipe out the world ploy that every high-octane espionage series has before. For Hobbs, it's another job to save the world, but for Shaw, it's a personal quest to save his estranged sister. Not that she needs much saving. The Shaw in the title might as well be plural because Hattie does nearly as much butt kicking as her two male counterparts throughout. And not for nothing, Vanessa Kirby transfers the charmingly enigmatic energy she brought to last summer's Mission Impossible Fallout right into this movie, and with a stronger leading role. Better yet, with Johnson, Statham, and Elba as highly bankable action stars, she's also the only main cast member with something to prove here. And boy, does she succeed. Kirby really acts her way through her action scenes, adding gravitas to every punch and kick more than the men she shares the screen with. And when she's not fighting, she's got the attitude and charisma to carry the film through its barely strung together plot. Give this woman an action vehicle all of her own, like tomorrow. Having the titular duo essentially become a trio is an unexpected pleasure for sure, but those who came to watch Johnson and Statham face bad guys and each other will certainly leave satisfied. The Fast and the Furious flicks have gotten lighter and funnier as they've gone along, but Hobbs and Shaw might be the first that could properly be labeled an action comedy. A lot of what these two do on screen together is funny, even if most of the jokes boil down to who can flex their muscles harder and who purportedly has bigger privates. These two stars are largely able to sell the tired comedic material they're given on chemistry and screen presence alone. No way! This guy's a real ass! But the action largely works. Following Atomic Blonde and Deadpool 2, director David Leitch again proves proficient in shooting close quarters combat. All the hand-to-hand -hand scenes excel where some of the bigger set pieces come off as Michael Bay light, with explosions and CGI swirling around each other in a sometimes incomprehensible storm. A bigger problem, however, is the film's length. At 2 hours and 15 minutes, Hobbs and Shaw can't keep up the charm of its stars between the big action sequences. The story drags, and it doesn't help that just when it feels like it's about to end, the script steps back and sets up another half hour of plot. And Idris Elba's turn as self-proclaimed Black Superman is neither engaging nor deep enough to sustain legitimate tension. Brixton Lore is a one-note villain for which Elba is merely present to add some dramatic pomp and frills in place of an actual personality. Who the hell are you? Bad guy. Still, the franchise's central ethos remain intact. With Shaw fighting to keep his family together, it's Hobbs who has to learn the value of his own roots in the end, with a visit to Samoa for the final battle that highlights a culture not often seen on film. It feels a little forced in, but it's at least fun to see how the first Fast spinoff finds a way to run the same temperature on the series' core family values, laughably hokey as they may be. Mama, where's all our guns? I can't read of them. Very noble, Mrs. Hobbs. Sure so, even though Hobbs and Shaw is by far the most removed stylistically and thematically from the first Fast and the Furious, it proves that this franchise still has places to go and people to see. This entry may be sloppier than some of the series' recent highs, but there's something joyful about that sloppiness. Johnson, Statham, and Kirby are all aware of it, and they deliver the fast fury needed to rise above the film's failures. I got him. No, I got him. I got him. I got him. For more reviews, check out what we thought of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and The Lion King. And as always, be sure to follow and subscribe wherever you like to watch IGN.